Hello, thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture, and we've done some videos here in the past and talking about dosing Kalkwasser to help boost your pH and to help make things easier and less expensive for you to maintain your reef aquarium. And this short video is gonna basically give you our recommendations on how we do it. And for what we do, we think that everybody should be able to incorporate this into their aquarium and then watch the benefits of boosting pH by dosing Kalkwasser. So here we go. You can dose your three parts right. and it works. And it's something that is a never, in my opinion, my opinion, it's a never ending money pit. And you're constantly gonna be buying new additives on a regular basis to continue to keep your alkalinity, your calcium, and your magnesium levels where they need to be. So you chase your alkalinity, but then you're still not taking care of the, one of the most important, in my opinion, the most important um, parameter monitor in your system, which is your pH. So what ends up happening is, is you have you know, your three-part dosing, and you continuously do that, and you have a consistent, steady, alkalinity, which is what everybody thinks is 100% the way it needs to be. And yes, it is very beneficial to have a consistency in there, but when I started toying around with the pH aspect of it and realized that you know pH basically will dictate everything in your system, you know, and I've refined how I talk to and explain things because you know, you hear this, you hear that, somebody has a problem with what I said. What I'm trying to do is just help people save money and make reefing easier and for the way we do it. And the things that we do in here have saved us countless amounts of money. And we've only been doing it for six, seven months now. And the savings is huge. No additives and you know, the amount of calcium reactor media that we're melting compared to what we used to because of the pH being suppressed and the carbonic acid being higher in your system. And with the Kalkwasser, it neutralizing the carbonic acid is the, the biggest thing that it can do, which then in turn raises your pH in your system. So the benefits of that are is the hydroxides will then create carbonates for you. So you end up having a lot of carbonates in your system that are kind of superficial. They're there, but they're not being registered as carbonates. And what happens is, is the, the hydroxides basically free that up and it's allowed to be formed into a carbonate that is utilized by your corals, which in the beginning, you're gonna have a boosted alkalinity. I guarantee it. If you don't, then your system is probably either fairly new or you were using something other than you know a carbonate buffering system to buffer your water for your alkalinity. A lot of times with calcium reactor, your alkalinity will rise, but it won't rise as high as it would if you were doing a three-part dosing. And we found that out, you know, as soon as we started dosing, you know, Kalkwasser on all of our other systems after about four and a half months of using Kalkwasser and the other one, potassium hydroxide. Again, I don't recommend anybody use that. Kalkwasser can achieve the same goals for hobbyists. The ultimate goal is, is for, you know, reefing is not cheap for everybody, you know, and it's something that is, can be a money pit. And if you don't have the extra money to buy corals, then you have an aquarium where you're constantly adding stuff to it, adding additives to it that's taking up extra cash flow. If the calc wash are so cheap and you still will have to buff, in time you'll have to still be dosing a three-part you know, three type system, um, but what it will do will be a lot less of it. And um, that's probably the most important thing. Calc washer is cheap and will achieve most of your goals. And in some cases, you won't even have to dose a three-part system. You have to adjust your calcium and your magnesium a little bit, but the alkalinity being created in your system will you know, help you save money and keep the thing stabilized. Back to where your alkalinity will rise, it's definitely gonna happen. Your, your alkalinity will rise in your system. I've not seen anybody that I've taught how to dose Kalkwasser have an issue where the alkalinity didn't rise and your calcium will fall. They eventually do balance themselves back out. With a calcium reactor, my calcium reactor didn't run for months, five I think exactly. And when it started to run, it would run for just six hours because we have an apex which basically controls when the calcium reactor runs with our trident we have set points for ph in there so if the or for alkalinity when the alkalinity is at 8.6 it shuts the reactor down so that it can't dose any more carbonates and then when the 
alkalinity gets down to uh, below 8.6, the calcium reactor kicks back on. So with dosing the hydroxides and the alkalinity went to 9.8, it stayed up above the 8.6 mark for like five months. And when it fell back down, it, would, it took it probably a month of kicking on and off before it actually decided it was gonna start being more stable and running, basically achieving the ionic balance we've been looking for. Um, so everybody can do this. It's not a hard process at all to do. Um, the biggest thing is is how you dose Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser is so simple to, to dose. At my opinion of it, um, a calc stir is a good thing as long as it's not stirring right before it's dosing. Because if you're dosing the cloudy liquid, which is stirred up Kalkwasser and undissolved Kalkwasser into your system, that can be problematic down the road in time. So if you have a calc stir, it basically needs to be stirred and then shut off until that solution is completely dosed. Then it needs to be filled back up with reverse osmosis water, DI water, and stirred. And if you get no settlement, you need to add more Kalkwasser. Another thing you can do is check the pH of the effluent. Now, this was something that kind of was a, a no-brainer, but I didn't think about it when I first started testing the pH of the Kalkwasser because um, you know, the pH probe's calibrated for a 77 degree P um, temperature, and my Kalkwasser vats were sitting in 80, 90. You know, some days it gets to 100 degrees with high humidity, and that water, that effluent was at like 85 degrees. So when I put my pH monitor in, it was not going to the 12.44 where it was supposed to be going. And it was only going as high as like 12.3, 12.2. And I'm thinking something's wrong. And then I'm like, duh, calibrate your pH probe for the temperature of the Kalkwasser solution that you're adding to it. So you can get an accurate reading of what your Kalkwasser pH is. And it should be at 12.44. It cannot go any higher. If it's lower, it's because there's not enough Kalkwasser in the liquid that was dissolved you need to add more so that you have a little bit of settlement so that you can make sure that you have max concentrated calc washer, which will then in turn allow you to achieve the goals you're looking for, which is dosing your calc washer. And we're gonna get into it here in a few minutes on how we do it. And it's been working amazingly and it's very simple and there's no waste, there's no cleaning. It's just make sure you do it so that, uh, we've, we've designed a way to do it so that it's just less maintenance and just easy to do. We put a styrofoam float and we took PVC pipes and made three, four legs that were about this tall. And if we don't top off our, our vat and we have too much dosing done overnight, we, and it gets down to the bottom, the effluent still will not draw from the slurry that's in the bottom. So we're still only dosing the effluent. Unfortunately, that has only happened once and we end up not dosing anything for who knows how long because we dosed all of the effluent that we could and then you end up you know going back a little bit on your pH but that's just a matter of just fixing it and getting everything back to you know making sure your vat is is topped off so you don't have to worry about not your dosing pump not pulling anything through it so by floating your effluent line that's connected to your dosing pump and this is how I recommend to do it I recommend you use a dosing pump um, it makes things easier for you to calculate to compensate the amount of calc washer you're dosing for the amount of evaporation you have on your system on a daily basis. So something that is, you have to understand with, with calc washer when it goes in the solution, you don't want the outside air mixing with it as much as possible. Um, I mean, it's okay as water gets pooled, that air is going in, but if it's constantly being renewed and oh, it's just pulling carbon dioxide in and it's causing a little film to form at the surface. So what we've done is we've just put plastic over top of our big vats, put the hole in it, and we seal it up so that way we keep all the extra air from being mixed with the surface so that we don't get that thick film of um, it basically it's carbonates forming at the surface. So that is something very important. Make sure you seal up your vat as best as you possibly can after your solution is mixed and in max concentration. My name is Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture. I hope you enjoyed this explanation on 
how to dose Kalkwasser the way we do it. Ever have any questions, we have a Facebook page. You can always shoot us a message and I'll gladly help you out. I've done it with dozens of people and have no problems helping more and more reefers save money and grow more corals and make them look better. With that being said, my name is Chris Meckley. I'm out.